Hello friends, I am Ramesh Singh. I hope you know the eighth edition of Indian Economy, published by Macro Hill Education India, has been released across the country by now. Naturally, readers must be anxious to know what is new in this book. I thought this time, let me directly share the things with them. If I am allowed to say in one line what is new in this book. So the changes you have seen in Indian economy in the past few years, as well as the developments taking place across the world and in major economic systems, you will find all of them there. The challenges which Indian economy faces today in agriculture, industry, financial sector, services sector, labor reform, governance, etc. all have been duly covered in the book. Being more precise, one can say that whatever rebalancing act the government is at present busy doing, all have been tried to be given right places in the book across the chapters. So it won't be really easy to say where which changes have been done, what new things have been done. As you know, like every year, the chapters are even rewritten to make them in sync with the changing time. Exactly same way, you will find Moral Answers chapter which has around 50 questions and their answers. The chapter has been completely revamped. Better say 95% of questions are new. They have been newly written. The rest of the questions have been redesigned and made relevant according to changing time. Similar thing we'll find in multiple choice question chapter also. As it's clear, the areas where more changes occur, naturally, those chapters go for major changes. They have been done duly. You will find in financial sector the causes, the challenges related to non-performing assets of Indian banks, non-willingness of Indian banks to lend because their balance sheet is not, not also in right shape. Together with that, the balance sheet syndrome, which finance ministry rightly called regarding the corporate sector of India, they are themselves hit by the loans which are due on them. Firms are not working properly. So willingness among the Indian corporate sector are too low. So wills to lend money to prospective borrowers are also low among Indian banks. Recently, Government of India has announced that public sector banks will be restructured. And maybe we will have in future only six to eight banks. State Bank of India has already started merger to emerge with one single state bank of India. We should hope good for the world. We should hope good for the India. As Indian economy is seen today as the leading engine of world economy, having the highest growth rate, IMF, World Bank, rightly expect that India can lead the world economy in coming time. But there are challenges. India has to tackle the issue of labor reform. India has to tackle the challenge of implementing goods and services tax. Several other challenges, ease of doing business. But one thing is clear, this government is trying to change not only the economic policies, which is suitable for the time, but you will find a particular willingness in the government of India to change the very contours of policy making process itself that is considered good by the experts and we hope it will bear 
good fruits and results in the coming times. With these words, I just let you know that the book has been designed to serve the purpose of the candidates who are going to take Union Public Service Commission examinations be it PT, men's or their SA preparation interview. Together with that, all state civil services and a large number of competitive exams of India. The book is today referred by those students also who are having professional degrees from professional institutes as well as graduation, post-graduation and many more. So with these words, I just Say you goodbye and I hope you love this book. Don't forget to give your feedback after going through the book to the publishers, Magrohill Education India, either or me directly. You will find my email over 